everybody, and welcome back to Higher Density Living. Today, we are finishing up the Creation Law series, and we are on our final one here. It's been a while. You know, we had to bring it back after, I think it was like a year. Yes. Uh, to finish this out, but we found ourselves on the final and, frankly, the most prolific and probably the most important yes. Creation Law, and that is the Law of Love. So, Jason, when you think about love, and don't don't give too much shit away, all right? But how how do you define that? What does love mean to you? In its expression or description, just fucking tell me what you mean. What it means to you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, Rudolf Steiner, <laughs> chill out. I've been reading too much. <laughs> <laughs> going too crazy my brain is like <laughs> by the way i've been getting people have been calling me to be like you know those moments on the podcast and jason's trying to remember what the thing is yeah. people are screaming people are legitimately screaming at the podcast <laughs> yeah, i can imagine how that's funny. like yeah, no i got it I Bro, got you it. had this one on, word the on, word on the peacock shrimp <laughs> yeah and you're like it's this thing and it like smashes shit and it's like really fast underwater peacock shrimp yeah that's awesome i yeah. people call me and be like it's peacock shrimp <laughs> Tell That's Jason so it's a fucking peacock. Yeah, shrimp. we get comments on that all the time about my uh, misspelled words. And I'm dyslexic, I think. I never realized it till like two months ago. That's, that's just one thing that because you it's are. like when yeah, that's just one. Uh <laughs> but because when I type, I type I's and E's backwards, A's and or uh, like the vowels. Mm -hmm. I get those all mixed up. Like have you God ever considered it. that you're just possibly totally illiterate? <laughs> that could be <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> Well, I did. I did not go to regular school. No. I went to Christian school. Oh so, my goodness! You know, and then that was just like moms teaching this Mom. curriculum. You moms know, it wasn't like moms. certified teachers and stuff. No. So who knows? So love, love to me, I think is uh, well, one, it's the highest uh, vibration. Why is why is that? Can we dive into this for a second? Yeah, um, it's the highest vibration because I think it's truth. <laughs> so ultimate truth. So love to me is like. If you're searching for truth, the ultimate truth would be an expression of love. Well, and what then what would you define? Like what defines ultimate truth? It would be something irrefutable, something timeless. Yeah, I, I think I think Jesus' example on the cross is a perfect irrefutable of self-sacrificial love. You know, like a martyr or something like that. Mm -hmm. The Buddhist that puts himself on fire. Oh yeah. You know, in Vietnam. Doesn't that, look that's comfortable. The Rage Against the Machine album cover. You mm -hmm. know, yeah, it doesn't look comfortable. But you know, and and uh, Raw talks about martyrism. Don't want to get too heavy in that. But there's this whole idea of loving humanity to the point of getting rid of the I. So you reduction know. of the ego. Yeah. A reduction of selfishness. Mm -hmm. And I think when you reduce those things, you find that you have absolute certainty in your existence and coexistence with everything. Right? Yes. So in, in a, a small sense, right, You sunlight hits you, you absorb it. Okay, so I'm first of all I'm coexisting with the sun. Sometimes the sun bounces off my skin, right? So then I'm coexisting with space and the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Or say you say something to me, okay? You share something. Well, I'm in your respective realm. I'm taking this in, but I have to live with you. I can't ignore you. You know, you're always like up in my grill. <laughs> yes, I'm coexisting with you. So there's absolute certainty of the the coexistence of me amongst everything else. And if you can also recognize that what allows me to exist allows you to exist and everything else defined by those laws, well, then you start to understand what love is because that's a pure understanding. It's that absolute, it's that absolute certainty of truth of coexistence. Yeah, it's oneness. It's oneness. Yeah, yeah. And that's what, that's what the law of love really bakes into. It is understanding oneness. And if you can really get that, your habits, everything you do is going to completely change. You have to be distorted like, oh, I'm so loving. I'm planting flowers. and doing this. No, no, no. It's the deepest understanding of how you coexist and how you're interlinked with all of those things that are around you. Yeah, and a completing an action of planting flowers or doing something else, that, albeit that's a good thing to put your uh, – That's great. To put your action towards, that's awesome. It's a positive uh, – you know, it's, it's a positive polarity. But a lot of people think that love is an action. Mm -mm. And it's not. It's It's – an awareness of that we are one in the sense of if I do something to you, for you, or against you, then in my separateness, I'm not loving. Yes, correct. That's unloving. Yes. 
because it's ununderstanding. Mm-hmm. Because you then assume that you are separate from that other person or separate from the flora and fauna or separate from energy, which pervades the universe. You're not. That, that, that's where war is so important because th- it's two groups, factions of, of, of consciousness uh, coming against each other, saying we are completely separate to the point of we're going to go against each other's free will. You know, when you describe it like that, it's almost like it's almost like this law of love or understanding is the first and the last thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. And here's how I would describe that: because when you start to love, you begin to understand. So you need to physically be in that law to start. But then the absolute end goal is total love, empathy, perception, understanding. All of those things fully encompassed, fully perspective, uh, fully perfected, you know, relatively absolute perfection for what that thing is. So it's it's the beginning and the end, which tells me it's all encompassing. Yeah, which not, is not only of itself but other laws, which is infinity, which is infinity, which they you know now science is trying to do like I think it's like a one a two. It's like the different levels of infinity, and they still keep you know they have all these levels of affinity now that they're coming up with you know like this this affinity is is not as big as this infinity, but there's three types, but it infinity is infinity. You know, like, I mean, when you look at, when you look at what's going to, what's going to continue to be pervasive in the universe when humans are gone, maybe the earth implodes, whatever may happen. Maybe the groundwater causes the, it's the energy, <laughs> the sea to rise, we'll you know, there. to the point of, yeah, we'll, we'll get, get there. there. But I mean, it doesn't matter. Love permeates the universe. So it is the fabric of the universe. And and science will figure that out eventually over time. But, um, you know, when they go there. But l- love is that force. It's a binding agent of understanding. Yes, yeah, there you go. That's a great And if word. you can't bring these things together, nothing can be formed. So the, the universe, creation, is the perfect reflection of love itself. Because it allows you to exist. It understands coexistence. It understands bringing these energies. It understands the permeation of these things through everything. It's it's like total, complete comprehension of everything. Mm-hmm. And so that's why it is the beginning and the end. Because as you continue to evolve, as you go through your meat suits, as you find yourselves in higher densities, when you get to the end, when you go back to the thing from whence you came, that's when you really understand and finalize what love is. Yeah, and I think love is coming to your higher self, you know, like in the sense of of it, it, when it expresses that way. Like we talked about war, but then you remember, you know, that I think it was World War One where they all got together from the trenches and played soccer and mm-hmm. and saying Chris, it was Christmas time. Yeah, you know, and then the officers had to be like, no, 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 you're not in your role. Your role is to kill this person. Fuck your role. Not have fun, yeah. you know. But the, that Christmas time, they all got together for a few hours. And each recognized each other as a human. Mm -hmm. And that is an expression of love. And I think we're we're so impacted by love. You know, and you could see it in in stories and the way that movies and and shows are played out. You know, the thing that impacts us or moves us is that self-sacrificial act that we see another human do, you know, to another human. And then it it becomes something that's not normal. No, it's – Jason – it's because we start to recognize it's no longer the I form. Remember you said mm-hmm. the I goes away? Yeah. It becomes the we form. Yes. It becomes the collective. Mm-hmm. It's if, if you imagine all of us as these like little part pieces of creation and we're all like, oh, I'm a separate identity. You know, this is my ego. This is how I think and feel. I'm a cat. Um, it's like when one sees the other coming together, you say that's an interesting unity, right? Mm-hmm. And then the perception of this third party who's witnessing these two coming together is like, well, look at that we form. Why does it bring people joy? Why is it always brought up in movies? There's something so primal about yes, it, yes. which we ignore. And when we ignore this thing, we ignore this law of love. That's when we view others as separates. That's when you find gavalt. That's when you find war, strife, politics, famine, you know, destruction of the environment. Ideologies. Because ideologies, you know, religions, because religions separate people. Our religion is uh, better than yours. My yeah. God's better than yours. This and that. You're going to heaven. You're going to hell. I mean, you look at Marxism or fascism or any of those, and you can see the total, it, it always implodes itself to separation. There's no love in it. No. And so if if you walk around and in the most reasonable stance, right, if I'm a normal human being, and say that thing, whatever it might be, a thought, idea, an ideology, right, a material object, if that's causing separation, 
that is not founded on the law of love. It's an unlawful thing. Do not follow it. It will not bring you evolution. It will not bring you down that straight and narrow path that you need to be on to be the best frame of who you are. Yeah, and I think you're an example of that with news. Like, it's funny because I'll like, I watch business news, you know, so I'll kind of get in a grasp of things, but you're like, I didn't know about that. I don't. Like, you know, and, and there's so much polarity in news, especially today, and it's all bought and paid for through corporations. Mm-hmm. You know, so when you, when you look at, at why would you even give your time or energy to that polarity? Sure. And you don't, there's no love in it. You no, know, and it doesn't do you any service. They're not doing like love stories. No. And, and, like, and, hey, here's a great story of where humanity, you know, was like, here, here's Russia and Ukraine, but then something amazing happened through this, you know, horrific. They yeah. don't do that. They focus on. It's totally zero sum game. The individual. Mm-hmm. And I think there's so many people that are like, you know, competition, economics, this stuff has to happen. I don't think that's the strategy for our future is competition. I think that's a losing strategy. You need to co-opt. So those people that you perceive as the enemy, those businesses you perceive as competitors, those loved ones in relationships, right? Your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever, that you view as the other or separate, it's a losing strategy to start. And if the perspective isn't shared of love to begin with, then you will never end in love. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I understand what you're saying. It, it's the, it's identifying with the ego and the ego turning around, making a limited perception of what reality is. Yeah. And when the ego gets involved and, and you need an ego and all that stuff for, you know, survival. But when you look at the ego in and of itself and it's taking these filters, mm. you know, like if I didn't know and I was born and all I could see is the color orange. It'd be horrific. Let's just say I, that's all I can see. And I walk outside and the mountains are orange. The sun is orange. Mm-hmm. The sky, the clouds are orange. It's snowing. It's orange. Sure. It's the lens. You know, it's if I put green sunglasses on right now, everything's going to be green. The reality is not. The lens. Yes, exactly. But we're, through our ego, it's putting these different shades of lens on. Yeah, and it could even be rose colored. Yeah, exactly. And if you have that, then you're like totally detached because if you assume everything's great, well, then you're not also understanding the pain, the strife, the famine, the negative things that are occurring. You can't imbalance yourself like that. And the law of love is encompassing. It's equalizing. It's pure logic. It's all that. that That's really important what you just said, because a lot of people think that love is this Pollyanna, um, you know, view of Mm -mm. where I'm just going to be love and lie. Nope. Just love and lie to Alex. You know, (laughs) come on. Don't fucking touch me. Let's go do our yoga. Don't put your hand on me. Get away from me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I see that all the time. Like people are just like, I'm just going to give love and light. No. And, And it sounds good, but you, there's a reality of like, I mean, do love and light. Let me drop you in the middle of this, you know, the front lines in Ukraine and Russia and do love and light to everybody. Yeah, how's that going to See go? how long that's gonna, you're going to last. That's going to last real long. You know, it's almost like they, they're they detached from reality at that point. They're so mm-hmm. polarized in one direction, they lack an equalized balance. So when you're detached, mm-hmm. how can you love? You can't be. Because when you detach, you're not a part of the we form. You're still yeah, in an I form. Yes, yes. See how this and this is, this, this, is this, this is a part where spirituality, you know, the ego can take hold of. We've talked about this before, but I think this is so important. And we were even making jokes about it before yeah. um, the episode. But people think that, you know, I went to this meditation retreat or I went to this, you know, psychedelic thing or I did this. I did or ayahuasca I did that. in Costa Rica. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on and on of all the cool stuff. You know, I've gone to this conference and it was, and, and none of those things are necessarily bad, but the way that you grow spiritually and evolve is to do the hard work. Which is internal. <laughs> it's just all it's internal. It's not like I got to go do external things or I got to go on some fucking spirit journey. But there's no cheat codes either. Like, yeah, okay, you take some plant medicine and it reveals something. But that download could be too intense and maybe you need three meat suits to figure that to figure that out. And guess what? When the plant's gone and digested out of the system. Right. What, what happens next? Back to normal. Now you're chasing the dragon. Yeah, you're chasing the dragon. And honestly, you probably weren't prepared for it. The, the work that needs to be done is completely an internal work. You know, for a majority of human existence and how we coexist, right? People think it's in love. 
because we have this great moral philosophy, this combination of ethics and morals that say, oh, I'm doing the right thing. This is how I should be around other people. But when it comes down to brass tacks or there's pressure or negative events, people break. All of those pseudo philosophies and pseudo morals completely go away. There is no love. There's no true understanding. Yeah. That's what I talk about, you know, with these different ideologies, the super left and the super right and what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. That is a privilege that we have to have these views Yeah, because of our privilege, you know, on both sides. So we can express our difference in how the Starbucks coffee is made and get into the beans and stuff like that. But that's a privilege that I have, Mm -hmm. you know, to drink coffee. Maybe all I could find is a stream of water and I got to hunt for my food. And for six days I'm starving. And then that one day I finally get. Don't tell me you wouldn't enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) I finally get a scorpion that I can eat the meat out of. Yeah, yummy. Yeah, whatever. But I mean, a lot of, like you said, the ideologies collapse Mm -hmm. because when, when love has to be fully expressed, that individuality or that it, that false expression can't express itself properly. No. So of course, that that universal code is going to implode. That you know because it's the wrong matrix, right? Because we're it's bad coding. We're we're forcing this programming mm-hmm. that completely goes against right existence. Right. It's a it's a pretty simple thing to understand, mm-hmm. but we go against it all the fucking time. Everything we do within society, within family relationships, we go against it constantly, and. We need to start with love and build our understanding, build our logic, our reason, our perceptions, fine perceptions, ones that are not just like, oh, that makes me feel good or bad when I see it. It's no, it's beyond that. Yes. It's the intellect. It's the rationale. It's how we actually engage with people truthfully, right? And how we, we understand ourselves so that we can then understand the other self. Yeah. It reminds me of what you were just saying is the, uh, the Hadron Collider. Yeah, Large Hadron. Yeah, the Hadron Collider. Yeah, and so there's a part that they figured out that is attached to a proton in the quirks, and it creates like a binding agent with it. And like I said, I'm not a physicist, so I don't know this. But it's really interesting. They said when they add time-space to that and the mathematicians, it's for and it takes hundreds of thousands of different um, movements that happen. And each of those movements, when they put time-space to it, and we just did a law of time-space, it takes – hundreds and hundreds of pages of algebra. When they remove time space, it's a short formula. And this is the thing that I think we need to understand with love is when we began to put these biases and beliefs and all these different things, which Abraham Hicks oh, came out with an amazing, I'm, I'm, but look at, but listen to this. This was so good. Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks, you know, that lady for law of attraction, all that stuff. But I love this belief. She said, belief is just a thought that you're thinking a lot. <laughs> Isn't that so good? <laughs> Just a thought. That's all it is. <laughs> but we put the belief and give it more power than what it's. But I don't want to get into the belief thing. But, you know, it, it's kind of short. Love short circuses and makes things way more simpler where you don't need hundreds of pages about her when you put that filter onto place. Yeah. You put love into that filter. It's so simple. And things become clear. Yeah. They, be, they become obvious, word. right? And then you have a normal coexistence. One that's in balance for you internally and externally. And that's something we currently miss. Think about how much time people spend like just drooling over their electronic devices. Think about how much technology has actually separated us as a society. It's not designed with love. The intentions are wrong. They're not mm-hmm. unifying right. intentions. No. Think about how marketing has been developed through Google oh, right, or yeah, Microsoft. Right. It's yes. to separate people. Mm-hmm. And there's money being made off of separation. None of these things are actually designed with a unity principle or a, a we form that really align with how things exist. So it naturally tells you that these things are impermanent. They will never last. And when you search for these things through the law of love, when you use love as the lens, this lens of pure understanding, intellect, rationale, logic, all that beautiful stuff, perception, you will find those things which are permanent, things that are permanent within yourself, within relationships within technology and other people that you choose to engage with, flora and fauna, the way you view the planet, the way you view the universe, and your place in it. And that being said, that is the law of love. Yes. I like what you have here, though. I'm going to kind of get into the material a little bit. 
You said love is the absolute certainty that one lives with and coexists with everything. So that's the oneness principle we talked about. But this is you. It's described a little bit more. Love is the absolute certainty and the absolute knowledge and the absolute feeling and, the, and comprehension. comprehension. Okay, that gotta, all life is a fragment of one's own life. Okay, so hold on. Let's slow this down here. So, certainty, absolute. That's a important word. There's, there's no. It's without yeah, question. Yeah, it's without question. Yeah. So without question, right? You are certain that something will happen. You have knowledge of it. You can feel and perceive it, and you comprehend it, which means you understand. But when the stream of love is happening, when that stream of love is happening, it brings these. That's how I viewed this as. It, it brings yeah. certainty. Yep. If, if I'm viewing, if I have the lens of love on, let's just kind of keep it simple. The if I have the lens of love on, I'm going to have certainty. I'm going to be able to have more knowledge. Yes. You know, which creates wisdom. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to have my feelings are going to be in alignment with my higher self. 100%. You, you want to know why? Because when you take these. We take that lens or this river of love. So cool. It's, I don't know why it always sounds so good. And you get out of the fucking way and let it flow. You will start to understand, perceive, and evolve at an accelerated rate that you otherwise hadn't touched before. Yes. And every single person, every single living entity that you interact with, you will accelerate their evolution too because they have now had the ability to interact with you also. It's so it, – it will permeate you like a perfume. And when you walk by, people will feel that energy. They will feel that understanding. They will feel it in every conversation that they have with you because you have those conversations with yourself. I don't even think we have to even go through the rest of this, honestly. <laughs> you know? It's just it's the yeah. – it, love is the beginning and the end. It's the first and the last. It's everything. Yeah. It's everything. And with that – All is one, and thank you very much for joining us today on Higher Density Living. Thank you.